The government of the Philippines is a body that governs the entire country. It is the one that chooses which sector will grow the most, and also the one who chooses if a sector even needs to exist. These sectors are seen in various situations. It could be related to education, healthcare, and military funding. But for the government of the Philippines to function, it needs to make money. After all, how will it decide what would happen to the country if it had no money coming in? The government, just like any other body of nations, functions by receiving money from its citizens. These are mostly known as tax revenues, the single most important factor in providing government revenues for policymakers. The Philippines generates a lot of tax revenues every year. In 2021 alone, it had a whopping 48 billion US dollars. These are collected from various sources, individual and corporate taxes, to property and GST, and even taxes on international trade. But aside from tax revenues, the government of the Philippines also generates money from so-called non-tax revenues. These are, however, not as significant as tax revenues. In 2021, they only came out at about $4.5 billion. They are mostly generated from factors such as its government-owned enterprises. Some of the most known are the likes of the Philippine National Oil Company and the Land Bank of the Philippines. Non-tax revenues can also be generated through royalties. One that is amongst the most famous is the Malampaya gas field, and in 2021, it had generated nearly $400 million in royalties. The National Oil Company to the Malampaya gas field is just amongst the schemes that generate non-tax revenues to the government. There are also times when they can make money through the privatization of a government-owned asset, where they could either sell it to a conglomerate or through a public offering to the stock exchange. Another factor that increases non-tax revenue is foreign grants, with one example the U.S. aid. Both the tax and non-tax revenue results in around $52.5 billion in annual government revenues. While it may sound quite an enormous number, it is actually quite low, especially when we talk about how much the government spends. This can then lead us to where and how much the government actually spends money. Capital generated from taxes and non-taxes is often known for paying down its government employees, constructing infrastructures, and even stimulating the economy by giving money to its people. These spendings are known to be guided by the so-called national budget, one that is enacted each year. In 2021, the government spent over $83 billion, which is a figure that is nearly double the amount it had generated in the same year. How could the government spend much more than what it generated? Well, before we answer, then we must first take a look at where the government is spending the money. In 2021, the largest agency or sector that received the most funding from the government was the Department of Education. They alone received $13.5 billion in annual funding. These are then spread out to employ teachers, construct classrooms, and so on. The second largest, on the other hand, is the Department of Public Works and Highways, which received $12.3 billion. The others, in no particular order, received the rest. The Department of National Defense got $3.6 billion. The Department of Health is at $3.7 billion. The Department of Agriculture just $1.5 billion. And the list of how much these agencies receive goes on until the very last dollar. Do take note that these are more complex than they seem. Because the funding where the government places its money could lead to the construction of railways, the provision for COVID-19 vaccines, and even some research and development institutions. The budget has pinpointed this clearly. Rail transportation projects had a nearly $1 billion budget, while COVID-19 vaccines were at just $45 million, and the construction of a virology institute for research and development purposes was just $5 million. What may sound quite intriguing is that some of the annual budgets are spent on servicing government debt. In 2021, out of the total $83 billion it had spent, nearly $10 billion was actually used to pay down the country's debt. Quite a figure, since that same $10 billion would be better off spent on stimulating the economy through various instruments. Now the government is running on a deficit. As we've said earlier, how can the government afford this excessive spending? What are the implications that this could bring? Well, the first that we must mention is that this budget deficit is actually normal. It is applied in many countries and even at companies. In fact, the Philippines has been running on a deficit consistently since 1998. Not a year had it earned more than it had spent. This deficit then leads the government to borrow money, which is one of the reasons why the debt repayments from the budget came from. The larger the deficit, the more debt the government has to take to service its government goals. What could be profoundly good about this economic policy is that it allows the government to pursue better agendas. Take for example the government's infrastructure project. When a successful project has been undertaken, it would eventually return enough money for the government to pay down the deficit it had borrowed from. A railway that pushed government debt is more than likely planned to earn enough to service the initial debt. It could do so by earning money from the operations of the railway, or it could lead to higher tax revenues from better productivity.
The budget given to the Department of Education is one of the most crucial in developing the Philippines. A high budget for this department would ensure education is provisioned throughout its population, which would result in the country entering high-value industries, such as manufacturing, which would then lead to a stronger influx of foreign investments in the future, along with an increase of productivity, which would greatly affect tax revenues. Although the investment into education is not always the best thing a government may do, since many countries around the world have been quite successful without doing the same. But for the Philippines, a country with a growing population, it might be the best idea for now. And this is not to say that everything will always go to plan. If the government fails to properly provision a project and its costs overruns, it could lead to an unnecessary debt burden to society. We could also imply that the government's investments into education may also be a double-edged sword. Since it is notoriously known that the country is one of the emerging countries experiencing what we call brain drain, a concept created and implied into nations, where its professionals and highly talented people leave the country in favor for better opportunities abroad, Furthermore, if an overly ambitious government takes place and takes too many loans, it could break the country, just like how it did in many nations around the world. In some cases, however, there are also some nations that have taken on too much debt, yet survived an economic catastrophe, such as Japan. But these special cases may not always be implied in every country that would face such a disaster. Do take note, however, that while debt is often known for being a notorious instrument, it is still and actually the single best reason why the modern world has developed to where it is today. Because it allowed many countries to invest in infrastructures, businesses, and so on. Finally, one of the factors that needs to be fixed is the country's tax revenue, which is not generating enough. The tax revenue to GDP ratio is a basis to see if a country is generating enough taxes from its population. The Philippines in 2020 has received just 14.2% which is a figure far lower compared to the rest of the world. Its Southeast Asian counterparts such as Vietnam stand at a tax revenue to GDP of 18.6%, Thailand at 17.6%, and the best developed nations from Europe are upwards of about 40%. That's not to say that the Philippines is very much lagging in its tax revenues. They're actually higher than Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore in the region. This might, however, be due to Malaysia and Singapore's having lesser tax implementations in them. Whereas Malaysia does not even have its own value-added tax, and Singapore with very low taxes. Further, there are also many countries with special circumstances. Oil-rich countries do not need to rely on tax revenues, as they gather enough money from their exports. This, however, does not seem to apply to the Philippines, hence it must turn to improve its tax revenues. This is done by closing down loopholes for tax evasion. While a controversial topic, it has been found to be a big issue in numerous ways throughout the archipelago nation. But it could also be through, as we have mentioned, increasing productivity and improving businesses and national infrastructures. Finally, government revenues and expenses are also steadily growing every year. This is a result of the economic growth it experiences. More tax revenues and more need to service its country. By the end of 2022, total revenues are slated to be 3 trillion pesos, or $53 billion, much the same as last year. But taxes and spending are just projections and are not always right. But even after generating this amount of money, government revenues are still far short of how much they got in 2019. Where it had received 3.1 trillion pesos, which may imply that the country is still trying to catch up from the COVID-19 economic crisis in 2020. Moreover, the details we have discussed are from 2021 figures, while the government is still not generating enough money. Its budget for 2022 in the coming years is going to rise higher. If the government revenues do not pick up, it would force the government to raise money via loans. But anyway, these are just some opinions and do not dictate how the economy of the Philippines should work. But do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.